In this presentation, we're going to look at quadratic or quadric forms. And before we move on to the question, let's motivate the idea. Many complicated equations of two and three variables can be simplified by a change of variables. Now, our investigation is going to involve quadratic or quadric forms and so-called symmetric matrices. Now, remember a symmetric matrix, say A, is a square matrix such that the transpose equals the original matrix. So if I switch row one with row two, uh, sorry, if I switch row one with column one, row two with column two, etc., I get the same matrix. Okay, well, let's consider the following example. Consider this quadratic form here. Well, I'm going to introduce a little bit of notation. The quadratic form really here is this Q. And you can see Q is quite a complicated function. Now, we're asked to consider the set of points, S, where Q equals 6. And we're asked to determine the points that lie on this curve, uh, which are closest to the origin. So the idea here is to write Q in a simple form through a change of variables, then sketch the curve Q equals 6 in those in, in that new coordinate system, and then relate it back to the original um, XY plane and coordinate system. And the idea we're going to look at is the um, principal axis theorem. Now, I've got a little few dot points on the principal axis theorem here, but we'll come back to that in, in a minute, okay, at the end of the problem. So, we have the following. Q is a quad quadratic form, so I can write it in the following. So it's just the transpose of this vector times a special symmetric matrix times this vector. Now, to form my symmetric matrix A, I look at the coefficients in my Q. So essentially, I look at the squares, and I see each of them has coefficient 1, so I write those ones down the diagonal. On the other diagonal here, I look at the other coefficient and halve it and write that down. The other diagonal. So you can see now I've got a symmetric matrix here because A and A transpose of this matrix is the same. Now the principal axis theorem says that if I come up with this form, well, I can write Q as the sum of squares. Now, Y1, Y2 is the new set of coordinates, and the lambda 1 and the lambda 2 are the eigenvalues for this symmetric matrix A. Okay, so let's write Q equals 6 in this form by calculating the lambda 1 and lambda 2 of this matrix and um, see where that takes us. So the eigenvalues of A satisfy the following. Well, the determinant of A minus lambda I equals 0. So we want to solve this for the lambda. So let's form the following 2 by 2 determinant. So A minus lambda I is going to be this. And to expand this determinant, it's that times that minus that times that. So, okay, so I've got the difference of two squares now. So um, I can factorize this or um, uh, essentially just reduce it to something like the following. Okay, now we can see here that lambda equals uh, 3 or minus 1. 
Okay, so the principal axis theorem says that I can write this Q, this quadratic form Q, in this sum of squares with lambda 1, say, equals 3, and lambda 2 minus 1. Now, we're interested in the case when Q equals 6. That'll be some curve. So what kind of curve is this? Well, it's a uh, hyperbola. Okay, so let's sketch this in my new set of axes, say uh, y1 and y2. So it's going to cross the axes when uh, the, the y1 axis when y1 equals root 2 and negative root 2. So it's going to look something like this. Okay. Okay, so you can see our points of interest are here and here because these two points lie closest to the origin. Okay. So what we would like to do is find these points in the xy plane. Okay, so that's the, the next step of this solution. Now, the second part of the principal axis theorem says that our variables are related through the following. So these are our original variables, these are our new variables, and P here is an orthogonal matrix, in other words, P inverse equals um, P transpose, and essentially it's just the matrix formed from the eigenvectors of my matrix A that have unit length, so the hats mean unit uh, each vector has a length 1. Okay, now it turns out that these, um, that these eigenvectors lie on the axes, the y1, y2 axes. Okay, so um, that enables us to draw the axes in our xy plane and then sketch our q equals 6 curve in the xy plane. But first we need to find these things. Okay, so the eigenvectors of A satisfy the following. So for each lambda, we want to calculate the, the vector V that satisfies this. So let's treat the two cases separately. Let's take, say, lambda equals 3. That was our first eigenva uh, eigenvalue. Let's solve this. So a minus lambda i is going to be something like the following. Okay, so if I look, expand this out, say I'll get v1 equals minus v2. So all I need to do is choose either v1 or v2, and I'll get the other one. So here I can see v1 equals uh, minus v2. So let's um, say choose v1 to be 1, so v2 equals um, minus 1. Now, if I write that as a vector, 1 minus 1, it doesn't have unit length, so let's form the following normalized eigenvector from the following. So this has length root 2, so you just divide by the length. Okay, so that's the case when lambda equals 3. The case when lambda equals minus 1, well, let's see if we can solve this again for v. So our system is going to look something like this. Now 
So in this case, V1 and V2 are going to be equal. So I can choose, say, 1 and 1 and divide by the length. So now we can form this orthogonal matrix P that relates our two sets of coordinates. So let's just pull out a common factor of 1 on root 2 and I'll get um, uh, I'll get one minus one 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 okay so now let's draw this in uh, let's draw this in the xy plane now these vectors lie along the principal axes in the, or they form I guess the principal axes in the xy plane so if I sketch that vector in there that's say that's my v2 and i sketch one minus one that's my v1 and then what i can do is form axes okay so if i sketch my hyperbola Along these axes, this will be something like my y2, this will be something like my y1, then I can see these points are my points of interest. Okay, so how do I get them? Well, I can go back to this and come up with my coordinates in the xy plane. So now this point and this point are going to be the following. Okay, so um, originally my points were y1 equals root 2, y2 equals 0, and y1 equals minus root 2, y2 equals 0. So let's take the following matrix multiplications. Okay, so it's 1 on root 2, this, okay, so if I do this multiplication, I'll come up with 1, 1, and the other point is just minus root 2, 0, so, so if I just do the same multiplication just with minus root 2 here, I'll get minus 1, minus 1. So in other words, we get this point and this point. Okay, so these two points are the closest to the origin in the xy plane. Okay, well, let's look quickly at the bigger picture. You can see that eigenvalues and eigenvectors played a major role in our method. And if I have a quad quadratic form and a symmetric matrix, then the principal axis theorem says that I can write the quadratic form as a sum of squares, where y1, y2 is the new set of coordinates or axes. Uh, the lambda 1 and the lambda 2 are the eigenvalues of A. And in particular, the set of a the, the y1, y2 axes lie along the eigenvectors of A. Now the relationship between the two sets of coordinates can be formed through this orthogonal matrix which just has the normalized eigenvectors of A as the columns and this is a relationship here. Now I've shown you the ideas in two dimensions only but the, the ideas readily generalize to three-dimensional space where you'd have three axes there. So here's one for you to try. Calculate the points on the curve such that um, uh, the, the points on this curve that lie closest to the origin. And I'll just leave you with one point the method I've shown you involves matrix uh, um, techniques. You can solve these problems sometimes using Lagrange multipliers, but this is a very nice um, idea to contrast with those other methods.